before becoming one of the most promising female MCs to ever emerge out of Brooklyn, rapper Lola Brooke was born Shanice Thomas on February 1st sometime in the mid to late 90s and raised around Tompkins Avenue in the neighborhood known as Bed-Stuy. When asked to describe what her childhood was like growing up on those immensely crowded streets, Lola would reveal to TUC Magazine, it's like every day there was always a story to tell. Either I was in it or I was just watching it. It was real corrupted. When I was young, I was thinking these are the things you're supposed to see, like violence or struggles and family issues or whatever with my dad. So I started to think that these are the things I'm supposed to go through. As you can tell from that quote, her childhood was far from easy, but that never prevented Lola from believing that she was meant to accomplish something special. Every day she'd wake up with a feeling deep inside of herself that she was meant to do something spectacular with her life. The question was, what was that something supposed to be? Throughout her childhood, she wasn't sure, but that never stopped her from working towards it. I was a kid before even stepping outside and being able to cross the street. I was still dealing with mental issues, being in a house, family issues, and uh, missing on taking part of bonding with my dad at points or whatever, or my mom's can't really bond with me as much as she can because she's a single parent. Starting at around eight years old, Lola began using words as an outlet to express herself creatively. With her father having pretty much never been a presence in her life, her mom sent her to spend a summer in Birmingham, Alabama at her grandmother's house. That's where Lola came across a music video for the rap duo Criss Cross and instantly fell in love with hip hop. While watching that video, Lola turned to her grandma and told her point blank that one day she was going to become a rapper herself. Something that a lot of grandmothers probably get scared when they hear. But a lot would have to happen between that realization and the fulfillment of her dreams. With how uncomfortable she was discussing the difficult emotions she was experiencing, Lola begged her mom to bring her home bunch of journals from the 99 cent store and began chronicling her feelings as often as possible. Eventually, this would lead to her finding new ways to express herself creatively. As she explained to Girls United, telling them, probably within the next two to three years, I started doing poetry. It's crazy because when I went to school, they actually made us do poetry, so I was excited about it. Then I started rapping. It was a real built up timeline that goes from journaling, diaries, poetry, then rapping. During junior high is when Lola began testing out her lyrical ability. Much to her own surprise, her schoolmates all expressed how talented they thought she was and encouraged her to keep it up. At the time, however, Lola wasn't sure if rap music was going to become anything more than emotional release valve. But here's the thing, music had always been in her blood. Not only did she discover a love for hip hop at age eight, but her mom used to play music while cleaning the house and whenever she'd head over to her aunt's place in the Marcy Projects, she'd watch her cousins record music in a little studio that they had set up in one of their bedrooms. I was rapping, but the people that I was rapping with, they stopped rapping. I didn't know how to move forward with it, so I stopped. And then I started mm -hmm. doing it as a hobby. Like I was making music, but I was never putting it out. So inspired by her family, culture, and hip hop icons like Missy Elliott, Eve, Meek Mill, and 50 Cent, Lola would eventually dare to be different and hit New York's freestyle circuit as the first step in launching a career for herself as a hip hop artist. Now, when it comes to Lola Brooks rap career, I guess we should start with her rap name. Now you guys all remember Lola Bunny from Space Jam, right? Okay, good, because it's almost as simple as that. Back in high school, Lola, that's the real life individual, not the curvaceous animated bunny, used to wear her hair in ponytails and people would always comment upon her look, telling her that she resembled Lola Bunny. From that point forward, Lola just stuck around as her nickname, but she was getting serious about becoming a rapper. This young woman recognized that she needed a killer handle. So at 3 a.m. one morning, she and her cousin sat around throwing ideas out until she hit on Lola Brooke, with the last part of the moniker being short for the city of her birth, Brooklyn. With her name now taken care of, the hard part came next. While rising up the ranks of New York's freestyling circuit, Lola was contacted by a fellow rap artist named Bleezy, who hit her up on Instagram requesting that she jump on one of his tracks. When Lola got to the studio that day, she ended up meeting everyone in the guy's squad, including producer Reefa Slater, who then signed her to his newly formed imprint label known as Team 80 in 2016. With the support of that organization behind her, Lola began believing in her talents and abilities more than ever before. And soon after, she dropped her first music video, freestyle titled 2017 Flow. Now this was a joint that Lola penned on her way to her day job as a residential aide at a local shelter. Prior to that, she worked a whole bunch of gigs in the service industry, including for The Gap, Little Caesars, Macy's, and more. But her favorite job was working as a residential aide, and back then, she used to take the J train as well as the B46 bus to work. 
writing the bars to her freestyle along the way. People be homeless, but they not addicts. They really trying to get their life together, but mm -hmm. the odds is just beating them crazy. She had no idea that the track would find an audience like it did. But when it blew up online, she recognized that it was time to quit her job at the shelter and get serious about studio time. In fact, 2017 Flo did more than just establish Lola as an artist. It also helped flesh out her network of industry connections because shortly after uploading the music video of that track, Meek Mill would reach out through her comments, calling the single straight fire. Meek comment under your under your post saying like you fire. Like like a lot of flames though, like nah, like he trying to say like you fire. Sign me that what's up? I'm like where I'm like, where the comment at? Where, where the comment at? With Lola having been such a big Meek Mill fan from day one, she couldn't have possibly received a more exciting cosign. And soon enough, these two had struck up a rapport. Meek encouraged her to continue building off her energy and keep up what she was doing, telling her that all the hard work would pay off. And it definitely did when she actually got to open for Meek Mill during a live performance soon after. Over the next few years, Lola would continue following that solid piece of advice releasing new singles like Options and My Bop, but it wouldn't be until 2021 that she'd actually achieve a breakthrough off the back of her viral drill hit, Don't Play With It, Play With It, Don't Play With It, Don't Play With It. Proving once more to be the master at creating her own buzz, Lola's raw talent would have even more artists coming out of the woodworks to praise her new hit including Cardi B, who posted an Instagram story of herself rhyming along to the single. Further enthusiastic support would emerge when City Girls rapper JT gave Lola a shout out on social media. From that point forward, Lola Brooks' rap career was in full swing. Despite having been in the game for over six years now, Lola has yet to release a studio album. Instead, she's chosen to focus on dropping one single after another, following up her breakthrough song with tracks like Dummy Yummy, On My Mind, and most recently, Gator Season. According to what Lola would tell Girls United, this newest track was her way of throwing down the gauntlet and announcing to the world that, quote, no matter how much pressure you put on me, I'm gonna pull through. In other words, Gator Season is about Lola finally discovering how to love herself and recognizing that her time is now. Shortly after that song's release, Lola would experience a full circle moment when she was invited to participate at Rolling Loud in New York City this past September. Not only was this opportunity to appear on the biggest stage possible in her hometown a dream come true, it also allowed her to share stage with one of her biggest heroes in Nicki Minaj. After getting the cross it off her bucket list, Lola Brooke is firmly setting her eyes toward the future, and her goals are far from modest. She described some of them to Sheen Magazine by telling the outlet, I want to be the new female face of New York City. I really want to hold that weight. I feel like Nicki did it, Jay did it, Biggie did it, Kim did it, MC Light did it. I want to be the one to do it too. I want to do it too. In order to achieve this ambition, Lola will be locking herself up in the lab over the next few months, presumably to work on her debut album that's been so long coming. And while those are certainly some lofty expectations Lola Brooke has set for herself, considering how impressively she's already brought most of her childhood dreams to life, I mean, there's no reason to believe that she's gonna stop succeeding now. Will Lola Brooke truly become the new female face of New York City's hip hop scene? I mean, we're just gonna have to wait and see. I mean, after all, this is before they were famous. So thank you everybody for watching today's episode. And before you head out, just ask yourself this one question. If you ever received a shout out from one of your childhood idols, would you play it cool or immediately slide into their DMs looking to strike up a conversation. Let me know how you'd let that situation play out in the comments section down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure that you never miss a new episode. My name is Clyde Smith. I do not play with it, and I'll see you guys in another episode. You think they'll get it? They'll get it. Damn.